Hi, I'm Shauna. I'm back with Grace and with Mr. Carson here. Finish up the last couple chapters. Finish up the book. And let's see what we're doing. So we're finishing Betty Dog's Special Gifts. And we're on chapter 13. It's called Fundraiser. Oh boy, looks like we're having a car wash today. Betty Dog thought happily as she looked out the back window of Chase's SUV. She could see the familiar faces of the soccer team as they were setting up tables, chairs, hoses, and towels in the parking lot of the shopping center. Chase carefully parked the car as a couple of the kids ran up to greet them. I can take her. Antonio was all smiles as he watched Chase snap an extra long purple leash onto Betty Dog's collar. I can take her too, shouted Sabrina as she ran up to them. Thanks guys, said Chase as he led her toward the noisy gang of kids who were setting up signs. Let me put BD in a safe spot first, and later maybe you can take turns walking her around. Hey Chase, hey Betty Dog. Mike, the assistant coach, ran up and shook Chase's hand. We got a hot day today, he laughed, as the late summer sun beat down on them. Perfect day for a car wash. Look, they're lining up already to get in. We have a lot of moms and dads here too, thank goodness. We're gonna make some money today, right BD? Betty Dog wagged her tail as Mike scratched her head. Then Chase found a place for her in the shade, not far from the drying area where the first cars were getting toweled off. On the sidewalk near the entrance to the shopping center, some kids were dancing, jumping around, and waving their signs as cars passed by on the street. After a while, everyone was working really hard. There were still smiles and a lot of laughter, but their arms were moving really fast as they sponged off a big blue truck. Water was spraying in the air and Betty Dog was grateful for the mist falling on her. Suddenly, a hard spray of cold water hit her right in the face. Oh, wow. Sorry, BD. I didn't mean to drop the hose, apologized Mike as Betty Dog shook herself off and sent the water spraying all over. Here, girl, let me move you over a little so we can keep you dry. He reattached her leash to a small table where some of the soccer moms were setting out water bottles and soft pretzels. By late morning, Antonio and William, two of Chase's best players, were walking across the parking lot. They had just come back from using the men's room at Taco Heaven, located at the end of the shopping center. Suddenly, at the exact same time, they saw something darting between the parked cars, far away from them. Do you see what I see? asked William. What's that thing moving? wondered Antonio aloud. Betty Dog, shouted William. It's Betty Dog. She's going to get hit. Hey, Betty Dog, Antonio called to her. Oh, wait, she's deaf. We got to run. Let's move it. And like the amazing soccer players they were, they broke into sprints as they dashed through parked cars. Within seconds, Antonio had Betty Dog by the purple leash she was dragging. Betty Dog, what are you doing out here? Holy cow, how did you get loose? Gasped Antonio, who was out of breath. Man, I've never seen you run so fast, panted William, who caught up with them. What is she doing here? And what's that in her mouth? A taco heaven bag? Yuck, did she get into some trash or what? He asked. Looks like she was trying to eat through the side of the bag, said Antonio. Good grief, BD. Antonio pull, pulled the soggy bag out of her mouth and started to crumple it up when he tried to take it back from him. When she tried to take it back from him. No, you can't have it. Let go. What's in here anyway? Looks like a half-eaten taco. Gross, he said as he peeked in the bag. What's this? What, asked William, who was trying to pull Betty Dog away from the mess. Man, this dog loves tacos. I can see some taco paper stuck in her mouth. Ick. Antonio opened the bag and pulled out a piece of soft taco wrap smeared with sauce, followed by a huge wad of green paper. It was money. Oh my gosh. Antonio was now holding a thick wad of bills. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. He kept counting until he let out a scream. There's a thousand dollars in this bag. And what's this? Then he reached in and pulled out a small plastic card. A credit card? asked William. Let me look at it. He took it from Antonio and used his shirt to wipe the sauce off of it. Hard to read the name through the teeth marks. Looks like BD was chewing on it or something. I think maybe it's an ATM card. Here's a receipt, said Antonio. Some guy must have gone to the ATM, gotten some money, then went to taco heaven. But he must not have been paying attention because he put his money and card in the taco bag and threw it all away, said William. I wonder when he's going to realize it. Now what do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? We have to turn it in, said Antonio. 
all of it? Asked William, who was holding the pile of $20 bills. I mean, there's so much here, and that guy would never expect to have it back. I mean, he threw it away. It's not like we stole it. It's not our money, William, answered Antonio. I can't read the person's name, but here's the bank's name. Oh, look, it's the bank at the end of the shopping center. I know it's not our money, replied William, and I'm not a thief. What if we just gave ourselves a small reward and turned in the rest? That would still be a good thing. I get what you're saying, said Antonio, but I don't feel right about it. Suddenly they felt a powerful gaze upon them, like some kind of invisible weight had been placed on their shoulders. They couldn't move. Betty Dog stared at them hard, with one blue eye and one brown one. What? asked William, as his gaze met hers. I think she's saying no way, Antonio told him. I'm feeling it too. I know Dalmatians are fire dogs, said William, who was still unable to move. Are they police dogs too? I feel like I'm under arrest or something. It's okay, Betty Dog. I didn't mean it when I was talking about keeping the money. He inhaled deeply, followed by a long sigh. It was a joke, okay? Just a joke. I hate to tell you this, William, but she's deaf. You're talking at a deaf dog. Oh yeah, well, she may be deaf, but she knows stuff. Can't you see her thinking? She's one freaky dog, he answered. Well, maybe she doesn't know you were kidding about keeping the money, because I didn't think you were joking. I thought you meant it, said Antonio. It wasn't like I really meant it, William said softly. I think I was wishing we could keep the money and was hoping you'd agree. But yeah, I knew we couldn't. Even if you had agreed with me, I wouldn't have been able to do it. It's not the right thing, but it's still a bummer. Suddenly, they could both move again, and they looked up in time to see Chase and Mike running toward them. I have never been more proud of you guys than I am right now, Chase told Antonio and William as they came out of the bank after turning in the money. You two are so amazing. Other kids in your situation might have tried to keep the money, but not you guys, not my star soccer players. You guys are the best. He had his arms draped over their shoulders as they strode across the parking lot and back toward the car wash. Antonio and William glanced at each other and smiled. They had done the right thing, and it felt right, and it felt good. And one day when they were grown-ups, this day would be a powerful memory for them. They might forget their coach's name, they might even forget the name of their soccer team, but they would always remember the Dalmatian dog who made time stand still as they were mysteriously guided to go deep inside themselves and to make the right choice. Little Betty Dog. Chapter 14, Good Morning America. Antonio, his sister Sabrina called into his room. Mom wants you now. What does she want, he asked as he looked up from the electronic soccer game he was playing. I don't know, but she's kind of scaring me. She was screaming, but smiling at the same time, Sabrina answered. He sighed and slow slowly reached for the control to pause his game. Oh, and your soccer coach is downstairs, too. And so is your friend William and his parents. What the heck, he asked. He flung the remotes across the room, ran into the hallway, and practically flew down the stairs. Sabrina was right. His mom's kitchen looked like it was packed with people. Hey, Antonio, Chase called to him. Chase had brought his wife, Becca, and Betty Dog, too. Okay, everyone, we have some really exciting stuff to share with all of you. Maybe you should sit down so nobody faints when I tell the news. I'm sorry, Coach, but I don't have enough chairs in my kitchen, said Antonio's mom. What news, Antonio thought to himself. Then his stomach began to flop, just like when he was on the Ferris wheel on the Ocean City boardwalk. But Coach was still smiling, he realized, and he started to feel better. Good grief, Chase, said Becca, who was standing behind him with Betty Dog. Would you please just talk to these people? I think you're scaring them. Oh, okay, sure, he said. So you all remember last week's car wash when William, Antonio, and BD found the money and ATM card? As you know, they returned everything to the bank. So today, the owner of the money and card called me personally to thank our guys for being so honest. Suddenly, the kitchen was filled with the sound of applause as everyone clapped. Wait, Chase said, it gets better. So it turns out that the owner of the money is a 63-year-old gentleman named James St. John. Does that name sound familiar to anyone of you? Chase was smiling so wide that all of his teeth were showing, and he looked like he was in a toothpaste commercial. Should it? asked William's dad, who looked a little confused. That name doesn't mean anything to me. Come on, Chase, said Becca, just tell them. 
Well, Mr. St. John is the owner of the big guitar shop at the mall, he said, and he wants to give the guys a nice reward. Antonio and William both had big smiles and gave each other high fives as everyone clapped again. Are you showing my shirt? But wait, it gets even better, Chase told them. He wants to give them the reward on TV. People, we've been in invited to appear in New York City on Good Morning America. Now the kitchen was filled with screams. The dads screamed like they were at a soccer game. The moms screamed happy screams like little girls on the playground. What's Good Morning America, asked Antonio. It's a morning news show, said his mom, as she wiped tears of joy from her eyes. It's on when you're in school. It's, an it's fantastic. Hold on, everyone, Chase yelled over the noise. It gets better. It turns out that Mr. St. John has a famous daughter. She wants to thank you, too. Suddenly, the kitchen was as quiet as church. Chase continued, has ever anyone ever heard of Mystic? There was a gasp as everyone held their breath. Of course they had heard of Mystic. Mystic was the lead singer of one of the biggest, most popular girl bands in the country. All of the girls in the country wanted to be Mystic, and all of the boys wanted to date her. Mystic would like to thank you by performing for you live on GMA. Now everyone screamed. Even William and Antonio screamed. Mystic was going to perform for them? They were screaming so loudly that BD began panting from the excitement. The kitchen shook as everyone jumped up and down like kids in one of those bounce houses you rent for parties. Okay, everyone, listen up. We have decisions to make. Do we want to be in the studio audience or be there through Zoom? Chase shouted over the noise. They started mumbling and talking to each other, and within seconds, everyone agreed to go to New York City and be there in person. And in that moment, once again, time froze for Antonio and William. One of the cool things about being an adult is how when you look back on the memories of when you were a kid, only the really special stuff makes it into your grown-up mind. Sometimes they're good things and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're big and sometimes they're small. But if they're in your forever mind, they're powerful. This was another forever moment for Antonio and William as they looked at the smiling faces of Chase and Becca. They saw their parents laughing and hugging. I know. And they saw the Dalmatian, they called Betty Dog, as she panted and smiled too. But there was something else. In that forever moment, it wasn't about the TV show, or meeting a celebrity, or being popular in school for a while afterward. Instead, they would know the strength and magnificence of being honest people. Honesty became their guiding light. It became their personal power. That was their real reward, and it would last forever. Yeah, one more chapter, little man. One more chapter for the little cursing man. Chapter 15 is Doing Good Brings Good. Wow, this is a forever moment, thought Betty Dog, as she settled into the back seat of Chase and Becca's car. They were driving home from the TV show in New York City. It was getting dark now, and headlights from the passing cars seemed to dance on the back seat around her. I don't think I've ever seen so many humans before, she thought. There were a lot of them at that parade a while back, but never so many in one room. When we were in the TV studio, I remembered something. I remembered someone once clapping at my head angrily when I was a puppy. It was terrifying. So when all of those people at the TV show started clapping, I almost got scared again. But there was something different this time. It was happy clapping. No, wait, it was joyful clapping. I could feel the vibrations go through my paws and everyone was smiling at William, Antonio, and me. And I felt joy go through my body, from my paws to my heart center and through my tail. I think they were talking about that taco bag I found a few weeks ago, but I believe it was more than that. It was about being good. I try hard to be a good dog, to control myself and behave nicely toward other dogs and people. I remember feeling William and Antonio's confusion when they opened the taco bag. They're good humans. They wanted to do the right thing, but were confused about what the right thing was. That happens to a lot of dogs I know, and people too. When I don't know what to do, I step back for a moment and just think. Hey, I know I'm not perfect. Sometimes, even after thinking, I still manage to mess up. Anyway, after William and Antonio thought about the taco bag, they did the right thing and gave the money back. And when you do the right thing once, you tend to do it again. 
and again, and then doing the right thing is a habit, a way of being, a big part of who you are until it is who you are. But the real surprise is that doing the right thing is powerful. You are filled with the power of good. Hmm, I like that, she thought, as she let out a big, noisy yawn. The power of good. She stood up for a moment and shook all over. Then she curled up again on the seat. I've noticed that sometimes when badness shows up, it can get a lot of attention and almost seem exciting at first, like a tornado I saw once on the news. When the black funnel cloud moved through the sky, I could see it was powerful. But then it started ripping up trees and people's homes and destroyed everything it touched. It left behind a mess and a lot of sadness. I've seen some bad people who remind me of tornadoes. At first they seem powerful, but then they destroy everything they touch. They leave behind a mess and a lot of sadness. No difference. But what I do know about bad is that it always loses. It always falls apart. It's always found out. Down deep, it is always weak. But good can wipe away bad because good is always stronger than bad. Beatty let out an, another long yawn. Looks like we're off the expressway now. Fewer headlights. Oh look, Chase opened the sunroof. Very nice. I can see stars. And there's a full moon. I will never forget this day. The air was shining with good. There was so much good I could smell it, see it, and feel it moving out into the streets and into the world. It was that powerful. Hey, I think all that good is lighting up the stars and the moon tonight. You know, I believe that when we go through life doing the right things, more good things come our way. When we go through life doing bad things, then more bad comes. It's a no-brainer. I choose good. BD closed her eyes and slept the rest of the way home. The end. And that's the end of book one. So I'll continue in another video clip with book two, which is Betty Dog and Gracie Find Their Power. Thanks for hanging out.